Have you ever been afraid to walk in the front door of your apartment complex and been scared the landlord might have you arrested for what they saw you do outside? And what you said out loud? Have you ever had to live in Seattle, Washington and have had cancer and no family and been mildly autistic and been a college graduate and gone to the grocery store down the street that they call a market and had to have so many behavioral gestural interactions and people staring at you and doing sacred geometry security or safety or whatever the the man comes from over here and then goes like this and then the other one goes like that and you got to walk through those two but you keep walking and then more and more and more and more like lego bricks start getting built you know to use an analogy and finally you say And some parent with their child and another parent with their child go by. And there's so many people in the business where you buy groceries. Nobody understands why, why, why did, you know, me as an example, not just, you know, let my chest get all constricted, let my brain get full of energy my eyes on track and my mouth stays shut and then go outside and there's girl scouts with cookies going in a van there's a man standing on one street corner there's a man standing on the other street corner who are making eye contact who are directing and doing and making gestures and darn near outside my home and the window I have in my home and try to piece together the consciousness involved with all that took place to go get some food and not been disoriented by long lines outside restaurants and not long lines trying to buy the newspaper or you know I guess they don't sell newspapers anymore or marijuana, weed. But have this dissertation called psychological cognition where I know my limits. I know how high I can go, you know, the crack dealer, the crack dealer's friend who sells some meth and fed me and the prostitutes they offer in their building over a, another part of the city they've got a cartel they're friends with they've got a thousand women and a million men with beards and breasts and dicks and titties and gender neutral social warrior killer elite masters of consciousness and then hear the bird outside and finally get to go down and slowly have a rest and a breath during this big excursion two blocks away And hear an airplane in the sky and 
remember about nannying tomorrow and I got to pick up kids from school and not open my big fat yapper and describe playtime or describe have you ever made a YouTube channel? To not have to help these people. To be able to go and buy some fentanyl instead. Drink some water. Survive off a plant where you know there's some mushrooms. And get some acid from that crazy tattooed shaved head, pierced person who says this am I, that am I. If you've been like, brah, sister, gender neutral human, activist, political, gosh darn heck, human. There's like a, you know, like a device you can buy like a lava lamp and it just goes. And you don't gotta worry about getting coronavirus or the flu like I've had. You don't have to Panic about a voice you hear and a person you don't see with another person who could be making a recording, who could be doing school work while trying to eat some food they buy at the store they're at when they get home. And so there's this paradox involved with this, this, this heavy metal musical extravagance taking place. This socialist, this political, this city deciding the body, the brain, and the mind don't have a place, don't have a home, don't have anywhere to go except where they say you should go. The body, you know, for me, the body, the brain, the mind. The world, these folks, these people are talking about has no exit. No entrance, no exit, unless you make it, unless you're lucky, unless you've been fortunate enough to be born as smart as they are and to know as much as they do from their intelligence. And have you ever turned on the oven, gotten ready to cook food? and had a nice Sunday ready and gotten sick to your stomach after what you see in public and the world and been just so distraught by what happens in your home and the only world you have left on the planet you are tied down to with gravity and outer space preventing you from just saying goodbye and farewell. I'm gonna go float until I don't have a memory anymore. And then put your head in that oven like Sylvia Plath did and just say, oh, finally. 
I'm sick of trying to find a place to set my cell phone fire. I'm sick of trying to find a place where I can take a rope and wrap it around my neck and finally get some liberty. I am finally at ease and finally at peace. Someone doesn't listen to me, watch me, hear me, see me, feel me, or get what I'm doing. So they can make them some specialness called addiction. Addiction to this restraint, addiction to this fake world. This plastic-like, toy-like, from China-like, hysterical consciousness, they no, we all want, they know will all save us and make us better and more proud and more aware. With less racism, less, less racists, and more awareness and better attention. For what they call the world and earth and planet floating in the same place in outer space every day every year every minute every last second until the end.